Hello, it's Nikki and welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad so many of you are loving the interviews and thank you so much for sharing, rating and reviewing. I so appreciate it. Anyway, I wanted to continue the conversation of success. So often we hear the extremes, don't we, of rags to riches, homeless to billionaire, sleeping on a random sofa to a blinged up palace. But what about the in-between bits? I know personally I have had many. How do you get from A to Z? But also, how do you get from A to B or F to M? In these mini episodes, I want to provide questions to ponder, ideas that might spark a brainstorm, or raise topics that might be a little bit uncomfortable in the moment, but they will support you to go to the next level of your business. As always, please come over to social media at Nikki Raby, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and breakthroughs. Hello, how are you doing? I hope you've had a good week. Today, I want to talk about those bumps in the road in your business that maybe you're not expecting. Maybe you've had a few tricky weeks or January hasn't quite gone the way that you want it to, or maybe something in your business happened last year. And to be honest, however much you've worked on your mindset, It's kind of left you feeling a bit discombobulated or confused or doubtful, overwhelmed, all of the things. And I wanted to start with an example. And the example is the X test. This was a maths test that I did when I was about 13. And it wasn't like a drug experience or anything sexy or anything like that. It was simply called the X test. And we were all sitting in maths one day and our slightly sleazy, creepy, stinky, tweedy, halitosy um, teacher really got a lot of satisfaction of keeping us on our toes. He loved that. He was one of those teachers that really got their kicks out of being power crazy or telling people that they were a piece of rubbish that would never come to anything. He wasn't the most supportive, loving man, let's just say this. Anyway, one day we rocked up to maths class and he produced this X test and it was all laid out on our desks. And he smiled at us and he said, oh, this is just going to be a little bit of fun. Good to see where we were up to. Now, none of us realised this test was going to be a test today. We just thought it was going to be a normal maths lesson. And of course, when you're 12, 13, you're not going, oh, I don't really feel like a test today. Uh, You have to kind of get on with it. And I remember turning over the page once he said that we could start And I remember looking at it and thinking, I can't do any of this. I don't understand. I have never seen this before. Oh my goodness. And I immediately went into panic mode. You know, when you go through an exam paper and you're just looking at it and all of the things that you can't do are screaming at you pretty much. And then your head spirals. And especially at that time when you're hormonal and teenage and you're just thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to fail this. And then I'm never going to get a job. And then I'm going to end up homeless and I'm never going to meet anyone. And you go down that rabbit warren very, very quickly. Anyway, after that initial panic, I took a deep breath and I slowly started to work through things. And so many questions were a bit of a guess, to be honest. I just had to kind of figure it out because you know how technical and logical maths is. You have to know the formula. You have to try and work a certain way in order to provide the answer. And I remember leaving that maths class thinking, I've no idea what I've put there. This is, oh, anyway, it'll be fine. It will be fine. It was really hard. We were all saying it was really hard. But as the teacher said, it was just a bit of fun, just a bit of a sense of where we were up to. However, this was not the case. The following week, after he'd spent the weekend, no doubt, enjoying the test papers, the teacher stood at the front of the class And he read the results out to everybody in terms of percentages. And I wasn't the lowest, but I wasn't far from the bottom. And I remember I got 54%. 
it was one of the lowest and he enjoyed it so much the humiliation the sneering manner that he had even though we had been told it was just a bit of fun to see where we were up to there were a few people that bizarrely got 92% or 78% and I was just thinking, how has that been possible? How did they know how to do that? And as the lesson went on and we were left with this slight weirdness within the room, I began to get really cross about the whole situation. And I went to speak to the teacher at the end. And if you can imagine, like, I did know how to speak my own mind, even though I was a bit of an introvert sometimes. And I asked if I could take the test again and do some revision for it, or at least work on it. And the teacher reluctantly was like, oh, okay, little Miss Perfect wants to do this. And I basically took the piss out of me pretty much. But I was really frustrated that this had got to me and it was really frustrating. I sound such a geek, I know this. But I, it really knocked me for six because I just wasn't expecting this. Now, how does this relate to your business or brand? Well, I often think about the X test and I think about it in conjunction with my business. I've been a working actor for 25 years and I've been a coach for six or seven. And over those years, I've had some amazing, wonderful, game changing moments that I could never have even dreamt about. They just seem to also come from out of nowhere. There was so much ease and flow and it was just amazing and brilliant. However, there have been some moments where I really feel like I've been stung. It's been a very almost physical reaction, like, oh, that hurt, ow, I don't know if I'll come back from that, I can't move, I can't get up, that sort of sensation. And sometimes what has happened is that I've been caught out. And when we have these moments in our businesses where things don't quite go to plan or we get a shock or something takes us down a different path that we really weren't expecting, we can start to take it really personally. You know, like, oh my goodness, this always happens to me. This is just the sort of person that I am. I should have done X, Y, and Z. Oh my goodness, I'm so stupid. And we really give ourselves a hard time. But the reason that I wanted to compare it to the X test today is if you don't know the formulas, like in the X test, there is sometimes no way that you can predict to know the answers. And my goodness, I've had some moments in my own career where my website has been copied and pasted. I've had that done about four times. I've had a meeting where I've travelled across the country because I thought it was to do with some paid work and in the end the person didn't show up or they weren't going to pay me or they just wanted to have a casual chat. There was one time when my website completely crashed, I couldn't access it, I didn't understand the DNS settings, oh my goodness those things still haunt me. I've had clients who have rescheduled time and time again and still not paid and then disappeared off the end of the planet. And I've just been in some situations that, to be honest, I haven't repeated again because I do try and learn the lesson and move on. But at the time, it felt like an enormous blow. I didn't know what to do with that situation. And of course, I just blamed myself. I allowed myself to get emotional and consider giving up. And I quickly went down an emotional roller coaster. Now, the thing is, when you're in business, when you're starting out, and I was having a chat with a client yesterday who is literally at the very beginning stages of her business of figuring out what it's going to be and making this transition. And I was trying to reassure her that she wasn't going to know everything and certainly everything was not going to be perfect in the first instance. And I could sense slightly that she was a little bit of a perfectionist and I understood that so much. However, you're not going to understand and 
uh, get to know those moving parts of your business until you start to move them. And this can be quite frustrating because on the one hand, you feel like, well, my website is completed now. I've got all my pages. Surely that's perfect. Surely that's done. I can just do a big tick for now. And yes, of course, set mini deadlines. That's really important to do in that sense of progress and moving forward. But on the flip side, I want you to give yourself permission that things are always going to be tweaked and changed and moved and edited and deleted and then brought back in. And it's very much a big moving machine and you can choose how to feed it, how you want to run things. Because this is the whole point, you know, we were definitely, well, I was definitely of a generation at school that I wasn't taught all of these things. And I've had another client today and she was saying, I'm really good at what I do, as in I have all the skills and I'm qualified and I've got 10 years experience, but nobody taught me the business side of this. Nobody taught me how to put myself out there or to deal with uncomfortable emails or any of that sort of thing. And it's true, nobody taught us how to do this. And even if we'd read all of the books in the world or done all of the online courses, inevitably there still would be moments where where we were out of our depth, taken by surprise, having to rearrange things, having to make tweaks at the final hour when we're really not expecting to, or have really difficult conversations or confrontations with people. None of that can be prepared for. So, How does it relate to the X test? The best thing that you can do is to keep showing up, to keep testing things, learning things, looking at things in a new way, adding to your knowledge and your skills, and not just waiting, standing still in dread that maybe one day you will have to do the X test. What you can do is just keep honing your own material and the way that you approach things. There's no point ever just being completely frightened of the beast that is your business of going, well, I won't do that because it's so complicated or what if I get found out? And there's a really great episode actually on imposter syndrome. So you can go back and listen to that one if you would find that useful. So what is my takeaway for you today? Well, I want you to think about those areas where you're pausing, where you're resisting, where you're holding back, where you're starting something but not finishing it, where maybe you're living with an old story, an old sense of who you are or a limiting belief that is really not helping you. I had this a little while ago when I was doing a talk for actors and I had a chat with a girl afterwards and she was saying that she went up for a really big job for a famous TV series 12 years ago and she got down to the last two but she didn't get the job and that rejection actually stopped her doing anything for 12 years and this was the first positive move she'd made towards her acting career in 12 years because she was still in that headspace of bitterness of like why did this happen that girl's terrible I could have done a much better job and she was still in that emotional place now what I want you to do is to look back on the last year and think about maybe the things that didn't quite go to plan or the moments where you really had to pivot Maybe it was the awkward conversations that you had to have over email, as in, uh, you need to pay me because this invoice is still outstanding in order to do what I need to do. Maybe that client who was unpredictable or messed you about, maybe you just need to delete them from your mailing list. Maybe there's somebody on Instagram who really frustrates you, who you don't connect with, who really angers you, make the decision to unfollow. Wherever possible, notice what those triggers are. And sometimes it can be that case of understanding those relationships. There may be people in your life that just don't get who you are, what you're about, and what you're supposed to be doing in the world. And you know what? That's fine. That's their perspective. And I know I have certain people in my life who are there for me completely, who support me, who cherish me, who back me every step of the way, who 
who say I'm brilliant even when I'm lying on the floor in some kind of state just thinking I don't know what I'm doing I didn't know I just don't know I don't know we've all been there I'm sure but there are some people who when I share things they will kind of give me that slightly raised eyebrow of like "Mm, so how are you gonna do that then uh well, what's that all about? Is there any money in that? Like, isn't it time you got a proper career? You know, you know what the things are and you will know who those people are in your circle. I want you to be very deliberate going forward. I know 2019 is going to be really big for you. And I'm not saying necessarily that you have to win a Nobel Peace Prize to make sure that it's big for you. But I know you are so capable of all the things that you want to do. However, you're not going to be able to just remain the same and in the same groove if you want to go to the next level. I was talking to my client today and she wanted to get really clear, she wanted to gain some clarity and she wanted to really streamline things this quarter. She had lots of fingers and lots of pies, all of which she was doing really, really well, but there were just some things that maybe had been outdated or she'd just outgrown or simply she didn't want to do them anymore and this is absolutely fine. Again, if we want to go to the next level, we have to be willing to keep decluttering and looking at things, reflecting on things and letting things go as well. One exercise that I gave her was to see if she could write a mission statement for the next quarter. And sometimes I feel like we have to have that pressure of writing a mission statement for our business, for our life. But if you think about how many businesses there are in the public domain, they've always rebranded and reinvented themselves and and added new strings and taken things away and moved with the times. Or ultimately, they've just gone under and we've never heard of them again. So it's really important going forward, if a year or the mission statement for life is too much, just think about what you're doing in the next quarter or the next month and see if you can start to align what it is you're doing, your output, your actions, how you're spending your time with that mission. And one of the exercises that we did was really relating to the fact that she wanted to go bigger and do things on a larger scale. And it was lovely to watch her writing as we were talking, because very quickly she started to scribble things out of going, okay, I need, I need to stop doing that. I need to send that email. I need to draw a line under that. And that will be great because it will fill up my Wednesday afternoon and that will be available to do X, Y and Z. And we're very much taught, aren't we, to do all the things, to serve all the people, to not let anybody miss out. However, I've realised, for example, that I know I can make a much bigger impact with something like this podcast that is worldwide, that is listened to in so many countries that I've never even been to. And again, I always thank you. Thank you so much for listening and sharing. I really appreciate it. And it's it's very humbling to me, but also very in keeping with my mission and where I can take it. For me, a great, not a great use of my time is having free coffees with people all day, every day, because I will be going over the same thing. And I'm really trying to keep in line with my mission going forward so I can start to predict and strategize that journey and really start to think about how I can scale. So I would love to hear from you now. Is there something that you know has been holding you back? Maybe a fork in the road, maybe something that didn't quite go to plan. Maybe you were let down in some way or something didn't quite happen and you thought that it would. I want you to look at it and I want you to make a decision on how you can release that because these things can be lessons. As Oprah says, oh my goodness, we love quoting Oprah but really thinking about what that lesson was trying to teach you. There's certainly been some times when I've been in conversations or relationships or work situations where I look back and it can be really tempting to be quite bitter and twisted about the whole thing. However, I always try and look back at the lesson. What did that teach me? What am I never, ever going to do again? What boundary do I need to put in place? So I was challenging my client to 
decide to consider where she could let things go maybe what had become a little bit more outdated or maybe as we all have these things don't we we suddenly sign up for something or we say yes to something and then before we know it we're like oh no I've been doing that about five years and I didn't mean to do that. I know what it's like. We can all get caught in these circles and these cycles, but I want you to be really conscious about it and really think about what is going to link with your mission and where you're going and what you're doing and what needs to be just let go of or deleted or drawn a line under. I know there may be a bit of mindset work alongside that, a bit of like, oh gosh, how am I going to tell them? Just start brainstorming. And I think sometimes really approaching it from a kindness way of like, how can I say this in the nicest possible way to this person, but also not feeling like you have to say too much. I know sometimes we can feel like we should write about nine paragraphs about why it's never going to work anymore. And actually, sometimes a couple of sentences will do the job. But if it's a good exercise for you to do, write loads out and then just streamline it and just pull it back a little bit. So I hope that's been useful today. Please let me know what you're going to do and how you're going to take action. And if you like this episode, I would love it if you shared it in your stories over on Instagram or retweeted on Twitter. Um, All of the episodes, I don't know if you know, but they're all on my YouTube channel as well. So feel free to come over there. There's lots of videos as well of tips and tools and things that I'm sharing. So you can find my YouTube channel. Just search Nikki Raby. You'll find me. You'll find me. All right, wishing you a very lovely week and I'll see you next week with more interviews and more mini episodes. Have a good one. See ya. Thank you so much for listening as always. If you do want to rate and review and subscribe over on iTunes or even share it with a friend, I would love it. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to find out more about me and how we can work together, please go to NikkiRaby.com or connect with me across social media at NikkiRaby. I'll see you soon. Bye.